Arguing with your boss is not something people normally tell you to do, but in this video, I'm gonna be going over some tactful ways that you can argue with your boss while remaining productive. Let's get into it. Arguing with your boss is not a normal piece of advice you're going to get, but having some tactful arguments or disagreements can be a great way for you to avoid bottling things up like Ned Flanders. So I'm not trying to say that you need to go have disagreements with your boss whenever anything happens that you don't positively react to. That is not what I'm gonna to try to get across in this video. I'm just trying to get you to pay better attention to your emotions. And if something is firing you up, literally calling awareness to that thing can be very, very helpful for you to deal with it. I'll share a personal example. I was recently in a meeting and there was something happening that I didn't like. I didn't like the way that it was being approached. And I called it out and said, hey, that's kind of firing me up. I don't really like the way that we're handling this. So can you explain why we're doing it this way? And just having that awareness brought that person to the same level to where we could have this conversation. So it doesn't need to be an argument argument, but the conversation now has some light on it where my feeling has been brought up because I literally verbalized it. So I have the self-awareness to see when I'm getting fired up instead of just letting it simmer until it explodes like Ned Flanders, which is not healthy for you or your organization. So me having the self-awareness to see that, wow, this topic's really firing me up, especially if it's a topic where you're invited to routine meetings that continuously fire you up. Maybe you can try to get out of those meetings or step back a bit, have somebody else do things. There's lots of different things you could do here to try to help alleviate that pressure on yourself or stress, whatever you'd like to call it. But having the presence and the self-awareness to notice it is the first step to calling it out. I know a lot of organizations these days like to say they have a challenge culture. So that's quite the HR buzzword, but what it comes down to it is that you should be open-minded to bring up things that you disagree with. Now you need to do this in a tactful way. So you don't just do what I've seen many engineers do and say, wow, that's dumb. That's stupid. Why did you bring that up? That idea is dumb. A lot of people, especially in engineering or technical fields, they tie their opinion and their identity together. It's incredibly unhealthy, but it's also pretty normal because a lot of engineers do it. So if you can detach your opinion from your identity, and I'll flick you a link to a video I have on that exact subject up there, but it's incredibly important that you don't have your opinion and your identity married together or completely intertwined. It's not going to end well for you. And as soon as you can do that, you'll be able to start noticing in others where if you say anything even neutral about their idea, it's like attacking their child because their opinions and their identities are so closely tied together that anything, again, even misconstrued as neutral is attacking them personally. And this is again, something where you need to have the awareness to when you see this happening. When I say have an argument with your boss, I really mean anyone above you in your organization. You need to learn how to healthily express yourself when you have disagreements with either the path that's being chosen, some policy, whatever it is, you need to have a healthy way to express yourself. And I found just bringing some awareness to things will at least get people on the same page as you to where they will acknowledge you. And some acknowledgement does help when it comes to you know, expressing your feelings and not letting them bubble up and overflow because you really want to be constructive at work while also preserving your integrity. So if at any time you have a concern that you're being asked to do something that does not align with your integrity, which you need to preserve your integrity and reputation with your life, you need to bring awareness of the group to that thing because compromising your integrity for something you're being asked to do at work, not only will people lose respect for you at work, but you'll lose an immense amount of respect for yourself if you allow yourself to do that. It might not be apparent at first, especially if you lack self-awareness, but down the track, you will really not feel good about what you did. So just don't do it. Just pay better attention to yourself and bring some awareness. Maybe have a small argument with someone about, hey, I don't like the way we're doing this thing. It could be that simple. The best way for you to start having these small disagreements or arguments is using your social intelligence to figure out what sort of communication style the people around you prefer. 
So if this person prefers you to call something out quietly in a larger meeting or prefers a one-on-one -on -one meeting or an email, I would say you need to figure out what they prefer and do that. It seems crazy that I have to even bring this up, but listen to the people around you and do what they ask. It's pretty straightforward. What I will say, if you're having core disagreements with someone at work, I would be a little bit wary about putting things in writing because as the saying goes, don't write what you can say and don't say what you can mine. So we're in the digital age and anything that you write is definitely going to be recorded and safe for later. And probably if you're using a work device, there's some pretty strong odds that your voice chats are probably recorded or at least transcribed and also kept for later to protect the company, not to protect you. So keep that in mind and perhaps soften your tact if you have a particularly strong disagreement with something, but you really need to start airing your grievances. And I'm not trying to say petty people problems, but if you have something that needs to be talked about, don't bottle it up like Flanders and you'll be much better off for it down the track. Keeping your arguments to productive things that move the needle forward for the group is very effective and it also will make you more authentic because you are airing your grievance and you're doing it in such a way that's tactful. And again, this is something that shows a remarkable amount of social intelligence, especially coming from someone who's an engineer or highly technical person. Because normally we aren't very good at those things. <laughs> so don't bottle up all of your feelings and go start expressing yourself better within your organization in a tactful, but productive way. I trust you've been paying attention to this social intelligence video thus far. I want to help you pay even better attention to your emotional and social intelligence by clicking the link below this video and scheduling a free call with me. On the call, we'll come up with a personalized plan for you to start getting bigger raises, faster promotions, and stronger relationships with everyone around you. Don't delay, click that link below and schedule a call with me today.